this the beginning sure of the video. Hi, yes, we're here at the Connecticut Hospice, November 18th, 19, uh, 2017. Uh, three artists, uh, Kate Henderson, Herm, Herm Freeman, and Kristen Ambrosi. And I'd like to ask uh, Kate to talk about her work first, how she um, creates her pieces and her, vi her particular um, creative vision, maybe for about three or four minutes. Okay. Hi, I'm Kate Henderson. Um, my work, this series I call the Cyto Illusion Series. My source material, I start with photomicroscopy images. Those are images off the microscope. And then I take the images and I layer them very highly, like about 20 to 40 layers in Photoshop or other types of imaging programs. I'm looking for what I call found abstraction. So I'm trying to find different kinds of shapes and materials that attract my eyes. And I'm combining these things to create abstract environments. So um, I hesitate to, to name my painting sometimes because I really want people to find their own world within the abstract mm. world. So I'm trying to give you a jumping off point to go into. Um, so these are all digital prints um, mounted on a variety of uh, uh, strata. This, however, um, is a little bit different. This piece I call my Nautilus Project One. Um, and it's based on a Fibonacci square. So this is 448, um, 12, I can't do all the math. I think that's 20 and this is 32. Um, this is based on basically the evolution of plant life. So we start out with a gaseous state um, and going into the first type of algae, which was purple, and then it turned into green algae, single cell organism, multiple celled organism, and then into the type of algae and plant life that we know now. Um, these are all mounted on aluminum and then poured epoxy over it. Not only does it uh, have the division of Fibonacci with the squares, but it's also in the height, which you can't quite see here, but there's, there's different levels of height going on there. Um, these are, again, all off the computer as far as digital imaging. Um, these are prints. This is, I call it, Klimt's uh, Golden Sphere. These prints are also hand done so that I'm taking um, cellular imaging from the computer and printing it off onto what's called a pronto print, which is a plate lithograph, and layering them with different colors or doing mono prints off of them. Um, and then this piece, I'm also starting to add some pastels, so I'm getting into what my other type of work is, which is large scale uh, pastel abstraction. So. Okay. So can you tell me, are these mic microscopy that actually you've enlarged? Or how well, do they appear to you? They start as microscopy. So um, you would never see this off the microscope. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this would be really interesting if you ever saw this. <laughs> um, okay. This would not be a disease. Anybody would, would understand what that is. Um, but these do come from the source material of this is actually coming from different types of thyroid images that I'm layering and trying to create something that looks sort of like moss and stone on, in water. Okay, that's uh -huh. sort of my intention there. Um, but there's several different layers to this, so I'm doing different techniques of cutting and masking and layering and different logarithms to try to get different things to show through. So I'm also very much reactionary to that. Um, cells actually are all pseudo-colored to begin with. They're stained, so cells really don't have a color per se. It's only the state you put on top. So I'm taking those colors and doing whatever I want to with them because essentially they don't exist in color. Okay, Most of the cells that you would see in histology are like purple and, and pink, but I'm taking liberty to whatever coloring I need to do with that. Um, I don't use any of the filters in Photoshop or any kind of mm. art marks. Um, so it's pure logarithm layering and seeing how the different colors reflect off of each other that way. So I'm trying to Great. kind of be as pure as I can in an abstract fashion. Great, thank you, Kate. That's marvelous. A little bit of me rowing there. So, yes. A little bit of me so, rowing in that one. Yeah. Well, next I'd like to ask Kristen Ambrosi to talk about her work and her creative vision and her methodology. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kristen Ambrosi. Uh, 
The paintings on the wall behind me are uh, very much inspired by Flora Boley's title of intuitive painting. Um, I never know where I'm starting. I never know where I'm ending when I begin. I reach for colors that um, are appealing to me or that I feel um, moved to work with on any given day. I do have similar colors that repeat across the canvases. I'm really loving teal and white lately. Um, but I'm also, there's an abstraction in the end, but the beginning of the process is somewhat intelligently based on the, what I call the three C's of art, the, the color, the composition, and the contrast of it. Um, so I'll begin really fluidly just moving paint around. I'll often be mixing my colors right on the canvas. Um, I use a lot of water. There's a lot of dripping. Um, I'll constantly be rotating the canvas so I don't commit to any one orientation while I'm working until the piece starts to feel balanced to me in every direction. And then I'll find which way feels like it should be up. And that normally is directed by where your eye is moving. Um, I have some color pairings that I like. There's a lot of kind of turquoise and rusty orange that I like very much, the, the interplay of those next to each other that repeats an awful lot. Um, but there's, in my, in my different pieces, there's a lot of layers. So very often I have scripted words or lines of poetry or even a verse from a song that I may have scripted underneath and you might never know that it's there, but I'll know that it's there energetically. And sometimes I choose to uh, let those still be visible in the end, and sometimes I'll completely layer over them. But there's always a play in the form between line and, and kind of mass of color. Um, and then there's different areas that look like almost like windows and, and what's happening is as I work really closely to the canvas and I evaluate what's happening when there's a lot of visual interest, I'll almost put a frame around something where I want your eye to move towards. Um, so different from mm. Kate, I actually love the process of naming the paintings. Um, it mm -hmm. really satisfies the writer in me and I see it as a, a really major opportunity for me to um, create in, in words or in language, what feeling or emotion I'd like to invoke, um, mm -hmm. or something that was inspiring my process on any particular canvas. Uh, I'm also a yoga instructor, so some of the paintings are very much informed by um, what I'm teaching and what my practice on the mat is like. This one is entitled Yoke, which is actually um, the word yoga is, is from the Sanskrit yuj, which means to yoke together. So that was very much inspired by that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, my, my process is very much a celebration of color, finding um, beauty from the chaos, just letting it be, letting it flow, um, never being directed by the end result, but more being really present with the process. So in the sense um, also, your work in, in yoga also has a lot to do with mm -hmm. your creative vision and how you visualize um, what you see in the... Well, there's there, one of the forms of yoga, yoga that I teach is, is called yin. And so mm -hmm. much of yin practice mm -hmm. is learning how to sit with discomfort. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a stillness and a mindfulness and it's very much the same on the, on the canvas that inevitably I'll get to a middle point on every canvas where I really, really don't like what's happening. <laughs> and the mm -hmm. sitting with that and the mm -hmm. working through that and the coming to resolve mm -hmm. and finding a way to create beauty out of that chaos is, is that's, that's my practice with the paint. So there's a certain fulfillment in, in, to your vision in that sense. Absolutely. Great, great. Yeah. And then some of them, some of them are very different from each other in terms of the materials that I'm using too. Um, this one I was was getting very painterly. This one there was a, a paint that I had that had almost like a texture, like a, almost like a cement 
to it, this mm -hmm. gritty, and it, it just very much, as soon as I reached for that particular paint, inspired this kind of urban feel through the rest of this particular canvas. Your stencils? Your sometimes, stencils sometimes I use stencils. There's There was a piece over there and then this one as well. Sometimes in the layering, I'd like something that's really concrete to focus on. So I'll bring the stencils in. Um, not often, but, I'll, but I will use them. I like how they, they look in moderation. Yes. Excellent. And then this, this particular painting is much more analogous. Uh, I was, every once in a while I'll give myself a little bit of an assignment. So if I'm using too much teal, I'll work on something that I'm not allowed to use teal on, or this particular no. painting, I, I was trying to keep it uh, analogous and not move into more of a whole rainbow spectrum, but to really limit my palette. So there's, there's always a process and a, and a learning and discovery with the materials. Wonderful. Thank you, Kristen. That's marvelous. Really good. Sometimes so. you have too much teal that you have to, that you got you to use some of it up, right? <laughs> Come on, Jonas. Okay, Herb Freeman. Well, tell us about your creative vision and uh, you know, your methodology. It is not so much to say about the, my creative vision. <laughs> okay. Uh, How are you? You know what happens? I, I, I get into the studio, I show up, and the, 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 the painting, I, you got to do something. So the painting starts to happen. You put, uh, you put a, a, a brush onto the canvas, nothing as complex as what... Uh, Kristen does or uh, or what Kate does it's really a, a simple brush to canvas and 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 wait for something to happen the funny thing is with landscape painting I'm I'm always thinking of places that I've been mm -hmm. and they almost force themselves they force themselves on me I put uh, I, 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 I put colors onto a canvas I'll, I'll turn it around I'll turn it around again and eventually I'll see something that I want to start to bring out. The funny thing is these paintings were actually uh, a group of older works that were liberated by Jonas Ruta when he decided to have this show and I had 30 paintings uh, of my new stuff and I pulled out these old paintings and the funny thing is that I saw them, I liked them so much they reminded me of, uh, of a way of being. And I think that's what painting is about. It's, uh, it's about a way of being in the studio. You can't monetize your painting so much that, that it becomes about selling the work. It's about how you are in the studio when you're painting them. They're no, they're, there's, there's no messages in my paintings. There's no, uh, there's no hidden messages. There's no Ninas to be found in the corner that you can count, you know, the way Hirschfeld did it. I'm not criticizing Hirschfeld. I'm saying the paintings are just, they're just, they're a way for me to, to balance myself. The lucky thing is, is when somebody of like mind sees the work and maybe they recognize the south of France or, or, or Italy or uh, uh, the east end of Bridgeport, and they say, oh, yeah, that, that, that triggers that for me. And, uh, and then so the painting has another life. Other than that, it's 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 a life in the studio. And the life in the studio is uh, is basically what your reward is, unless you're unless you're lucky enough to uh, you're lucky enough to uh, get into the into the major leagues in, in 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 Chelsea in the city, and and people start putting zeros on your work. Other than that, you know, the work is about uh, my own my own recollection. Uh, uh, this one I call from where I stand. Well, from where I stand, uh, you know, I, I went to the south of France to to stand in the shoes of Cezanne and Soutine and see those mo motifs and actually try and feel, you know, maybe a little bit w what they felt. Uh, uh, I used to see those those great uh, trees in Soutine's painting and would wonder, 
you know, was that a, a stylistic device or uh, was, were those trees real? The trees were real. It was caused by the Mistral blowing the trees over. So he wasn't making it up. It was just, it was the, it was the real thing. So I go in, I go in the studio and I, uh, again, like I say, I, I slap the paint down. She would I'd try and make a uh, try and make a coherent uh, message out of it. But the life after the studio, that's the part I'm not so sure about. Where where we take where you know where we take the paintings? They gotta they have to have a. It's 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 great to paint them, and it's uh, painful to store them, and it's great to rediscover them as I've done here, here. with this show, and uh, uh, and then the, let the chips fall where they may. You know, you got to be lucky. You got to be there. But uh, as someone used to say back in the days of Ferlinghetti and uh, and the Beats, you got to be in it to win it. So you so you keep on doing it. And uh, uh, I'm privileged to be in the uh, in a show with these uh, talented artists. So and uh, this talented impresario, this this curator Jonas Ruta, and uh, uh, th yes. But that's that's the way it is. This is the, you know you got to be. Uh, you gotta be grateful for what you got. That's 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 where I'm at these days. Thank you. you go. Thank you, Herm. You're welcome. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate your your efforts to describe your work, and I appreciate it. We're happy to, to we're happy to be in the show.